Hello, it's Mrs. Erickson. I've talked to just about everybody this week, which is so exciting to talk to parents and talk to a lot of my students. So that just, oh, warms my heart. So thank you. Um, I had told parents that I was going to say just a few things about the packets. Um, things that I really never thought about to tell you. So now I'm thinking about it and I'm going to tell you. The first thing is, now mind you, mine's way smaller. Yours is bigger. Mine just got condensed um, into a small page. So when you look at, I'm going to talk about math first. When you look at math, and normally in school, we show this up on the screen. And we talk about what you notice, what you wonder. And we give them a few minutes to think and look at the picture. And then they can just talk about with you, what do they notice? And have them list a few things of what they notice. Um, I don't know if your books are in color. I'm hoping they are. Um, they can say it's a certain color. Um, they notice that it. we only see one eye, but um, we, we could say, oh, well, I wonder if the other eye is on the other side. It probably is. Those kind of things. They don't need to write them down. They just need to tell you out loud. What do they notice? What do they wonder? This gets them ready for um, the question. So if it says, uh, let's see, today's was how many grasshoppers? Um, there are nine grasshoppers in the grass. Then seven of the grasshoppers fly away. How many grasshoppers are in the grass now? So on their paper, they're going to make not nine grasshoppers. They're, well, the first thing you can ask is, what is this talking about? And they're hopefully going to say, this is talking about grasshoppers. And you say, is are we going to be adding grasshoppers or are we going to be taking them away? And if they don't know, then read it again. Um, so once they figure out, okay, what do we do first? Well, first we have to look at the very beginning. How many grasshoppers are there? There's nine. So I'm just going to draw circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just circles. I don't want to see a grasshopper. It takes way too much time. All we need are circles. Then we go, hmm, are we going to add? Nope, you just told me you were going to take away. How many are we going to take away? And they should say seven. And I love it because most of you did this. One, two, and have them count out loud as they're taking them off. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. So now, how many grasshoppers are in the grass now? And we can even circle how many are left. And I love it because all of you did this. You put two in the answer, and then you wrote your number sentence. Your number sentence, well, we always start with the bigger number when we're talking about subtraction, so it's nine. How many flew away? Well, what kind, What are we going to put here after the nine? Have them put it. If they put a plus, say, okay, nine plus, and then what did we do? We took seven away. And then count nine, to, nine plus seven, and you're going to come up with 16. And you can say, wait a minute, is that what we did? Hopefully they'll say no. But let them figure it out. Do not tell them. Just ask them questions. Okay, nope, it's going to be a minus. And don't forget the equals and then their answer. A first grade skill, if they're going up and above, they could. you could say, oh, this is really first grade. This is like big time first grade. They could write grasshoppers. But you know what? That's nothing that they need to do. They just need to know that it's two and that they were subtracting. Okay, next thing. I'm going to try to keep this short, and it's not short. I'm sorry. Bear with me. Okay, the reading. They read Tim's Garden. One thing that I noticed is that what we're working on, and it's hard, is restating the question. The question was, what is something you learned about Tim and Tim's Garden? What you can do to make a complete sentence and for them to re um, to restate the question, 
and you could even write it out on a piece of paper and have them copy it. Something I learned is, and then let them finish. It's okay if they can't spell the word correctly. It's okay. I want them to sound it out, however they sound it out. And if they sound it out wrong, I don't want you going, oh, erase that, erase that. It doesn't make sense. Have them sound it out. If it's something like um, a word they should know, like a sight word, like am, they should know how to spell am and they should write it correctly. Um, but if it's a big word like animals, well, then they need to sound it out. And it's okay if they don't get all the sounds. Ah, and you just say animals. Well, what, what are the sounds you hear? Ah, n, actually, I take that back. Count it in parts. Ah, n, and maybe they say n, and then malls. Mm, alls. If they do something like that, that's okay because they're sounding it out. If it's wrong, of course, you know, animals is a big word. It's okay. You don't have to make them erase it. What I'm looking for are capital letters, two finger spacing in between each word, and a period at the end. That's the biggest thing. Okay, last, last, last phonics practice. So you have a word, you show them a word. This is one of their favorite words. They should be able to tell you what word is this. Tell your mom, you. So you would show them the word and say, what word is this? And they would say, you. If they didn't say you and they said, y'all, <laughs> you'd say, listen to me, you. And now you say it, you. And you'd say, say it again, you. Say it again, you. What word is it? You. And then go to the next one. In class, we do something really special with our clapping. And they can show you how we do you. Y-O-U, you. Y-O-U, you. That's just something fun we do in class. But as far as the word go, they, they repeat it. Go to the next word. If they really struggle with it, have them give you a sentence. Um, let's use the word you in a sentence and they can just say it to you. I hope this helps. I hope it's not too lengthy. I just wanted to help you with some things that we're working on and things that are normal for kindergarten work. Um, it's hard when you have older kids or you're not exposed. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing this ad lib. I'm so glad you have stuck in there. Thank you, thank you for all you're doing. You're doing fabulous. I miss your kids like crazy. Have a good night.